So the next uh, presenter is uh, Jan Geyer from Germany and he will talk about stand level growth and drought tolerance of Douglas fir, Douglas fir, black pine and atlas cedar. Uh, please Jan, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes. And yes. I also hope you can see my presentation. Yes. Can you enlarge it, please? Yes, sorry. Um, so do you see the presenters or the presenters desktop? Presenters desktop. Okay, then I'll try to change that. <laughs> now you should see the presentation. No. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go to second uh from left to right and i think it's there in the middle yeah. left 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 i don't know it's the anzeige einstellungen oh uh, yes ah, no, it's yes, okay perfect. now it's fine perfect so i'll try to make it really quick <laughs> no, no worries. Um, hello from my side and thank you for the opportunity to give a presentation today my name is jan geyer and um, um my presentation today is on um, stand level growth and drought tolerance of three tree species of Douglas fir, black pine and atlas cedar on a dry side in western Switzerland. And the co-authors of this presentation, Peter Bang and Petja Nikolova, they are also participating in this session today. I don't know if they can speak, but I hope they can help answer questions if there are any after the presentation. Um, this is an aerial photography of the experimental plot. And here you can see a little colored uh, map from the beginnings of the trial. And um, as I said, it's a non-native species trial in Romamoti in the very west of Switzerland, which was established in 1970. So this um, species trial is already quite old. Um, and it was originally established um, in 71 plots on a total area of 7.5 hectares on a dry beach forest site. Um, and 12 non-native species and two native species were planted back then. For a couple of these species, especially for Douglas fir, different provenances were tested. So it's not only a species trial, it's also a provenance trial. Um, very short side description. So we're in the rain shadow of the Jura Mountains. However, we've still quite a bit of precipitation with 1200 millimeters and uh, average annual temperature of 8.5 two degrees Celsius on a southeastern aspect. It's a limestone plateau with very few pockets of um, shallow moraine cover where soil quality is a bit better. But generally, we have uh, very shallow leptosols, high skeletal content, uh, very low soil depth, and also a low water holding capacity. And this is what makes this so, um, the site dry. It's not the, the precipitation. It's the very um, shallow and rocky soils. And it's also a site with a very low productivity, the native um, forest composition they found back there um, had an estimated annual productivity of three to four cubic meters per hectare and year. Um, the goal of the trial was to test different species, um, alternative species to the native broadleaf species. And um, this is a list of the species tested. Except for Telia, it was only um, coniferous species tested. And as you can see, six different um, Douglas fir provenances and four different provinces of black pine. The majority of the species tested were pine species. And um, these, all these species and uh, provenances tested originated from mainly warm and dry climates in the places of origin. So it seems that foresters back then already had anticipated this coming need for adaptation. We have heard about in the, uh, in the presentation before mine uh, to an increasingly warm and dry environment. Um, and the selection of species would probably look a little different in our days, but back in 1970, the main goal of the trial was also not uh, climate adaptation, but um, to increase the productivity and monetary yield of this, um, of this plot. 
This is the status of 2018. Adult trees are starting to fructify and proliferate and um, the three most successful species, um, black pine, Douglas fir and Atlas cedar. Um, the methods used uh, were different ones. Um, in 1970, the foresters back then started with repeated surveys of mortality of uh, trees planted and measurements of the tree height of the dominant individuals. Um, this happened until 2002 when um, the species trial was, um, or the measurements were stopped. And then it was rediscovered and reactivated in the winter of 2017, 18, where um, 37 of this original 71 um, growth and yield plots were reconstructed um, and uh, growth and mortality were assessed. And this map here, this colored map with the squares, this is, um, one of the results of this reconstruction of the um, growth and yield plots. And also we um, did a dendroecological study where three different tree species, Douglas fir, black pine and atlas cedar were um, sampled. And um, we um, checked the growth patterns in these species for the reaction on extreme drought events. Looking at the mean annual increments of the assessed species, we find three main groups. Um, we find the trees that didn't grow um, very fast and um, the lowest um, MAIs we find for the native stand, but um, <clears throat> also um, Pinus ponderosa and Pinus nica from the Seven region um, showed very low mean annual increments at the age of 47. Then we have uh, midfield with values around four, four, five, six cubic meters per hectare, um, <clears throat> including the, the cedar provenances, the two atlas cedar provenances and um, black pine provenances. And then not very surprisingly was that um, the Douglas fir provenances um, show by far the highest increments together with one black pine uh, provenance, which unfortunately um, we don't know the, the um, provenance of. So the reconstruction of the provenance of this um, black pine um, plot was unfortunately not possible anymore. Um, here you can see the growth patterns we got from the dendro study. And what's obvious is that all tested species share a very similar growth pattern. So the reaction on extreme events is um, very similar for all species. And we checked the reaction of diameter growth after the extremely dry year in 2003, which is um, marked with this red um, dotted, oh, sorry, with this red dotted line. The top graph shows the tree ring widths and the lower graph shows the basic area increments for on the uh, lower graph for the species and on the higher graph um, also for the provenances. Um, black pine provenances showed the least growth reduction after 2003, so they were most stable in growth. However, the, the growth level was um, lowest also. And the Douglas fir trees, they had the greatest growth reduction after drought. Um, however, also the most plastic um, recovery after drought, which is the same for Atlas cedar, really. And um, what's interesting is that um, the provenances of the tree species, they differ very little in the reaction of drought. So we would have expected a greater difference in the reaction. And the overall good performance of cedar and Douglas fir on these very shallow um, soils is also an indicator for quite a bit, bit of present precipitation in, in winter and spring. Mm, this is, uh, in this spider blood plot, we attempted to bring all the different measurements that were done over the years and the indicators we have together for an evaluation of the species tested and the provinces tested on the site. And the plot um, can be read like this. The, the further in the periphery uh, a value is, the higher it is, and the closer to the center, the, the lower the value is. And we have different value, values here, starting from the top right. We start with the height of the dominant uh, individuals over the years. And then we have the growing stop and the MEI. 
on the mortality in 2018 and the resilience um, parameters calculated from the dendro study. Um, and moreover, we have differences in soil types, but um, they are not so important at this point. So what you can see is that um, the Douglas fir species with these um, dotted lines, they uh, perform well in almost all indicators. So they have quite high dominant heights over the years, high growing stock, high MAI, um, and fairly high resistance recovery and resilience indicators. So this, is, uh, this means that um, in our synthesis, these Douglas uh, fir provenances, they performed really well. The pine species and provenances performed fairly well in the beginning with high um, dominant heights in um, 1979, so nine years after the uh, trees were planted. However, um, they differ a lot when it comes to mortality, for example. For instance, one black pine province from, from course grew really well in the beginning for the first 10 years of the trial, but then a lot of the trees were found dead in 2018. And um, this kind of um, graph can also show the development of the performance of the tree species over time. So lessons from this trial. Um, the trial was established with very pragmatic approach and it was great to be able to reactivate such an old trial um, established by the foresters back then by practitioners. However, there were some design problems such as alternating soil qualities or insufficient documentation that made it um, difficult to, um, for example, to identify the different prov uh, provenances. Um, for this dry limestone site, we can conclude that um, the differences in growth, mortality, and response to drought were larger between the species than between the provenances. Um, that growth reduction after drought of 2003 was fairly small in the black pine provenances and high in Douglas fir, and that we had a very fast recovery of uh, diameter growth after drought in the Atlas cedar and Douglas fir provenances. The black pine performed very well in the beginning and survived the droughts of 76 and 2003 very well, but has recently shown very high mortality. Um, and other species such as Serbian spruce um, or European larch uh, were found to be totally unsuitable on this, uh, on this side. And what's um, very important to me is that this is long-term species trials are quite valuable, I think, as the suitability of species and, and also of provenances might only become clear after decades. And this is what, um, what our results also show that the ranking of the tree species changed a lot over time. So rank, uh, Douglas fir performance was very, very good throughout the years. Atlas cedar had a slow start, but now grows almost as um, fast as Douglas fir and caught up a lot. Uh, whereas, for example, the Black Pine province, almost all of them were very fast. Cyrus grew well in the beginning, but fell back later. And now a lot of them are dying already at the age of 50. So um, these long-term species trials are very valuable as our results show that we have to be careful with recommendations based on initial results at a very young stage of, um, of uh, development. Um, and I want to end this with acknowledgements because many more people worked in this uh, in this trial than me, uh, especially to the foresters who established the trial and the people who did the field work, the soil profiles, and um, the Canton of Ward who was responsible for the funding. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jan. Uh, thank you for a nice presentation. I think this is exactly what we need when we are making site-specific risk assessment. Those 50 years old trials are very valuable uh, for our decisions, for our, for our further work, for our management. Is there any questions from the public? Yes, we have one question for Jana. Which species uh, are present in the native broad-leaved stand, potential for type? So I'm not quite sure about this question, actually. So it, it, it's, it was a um, beach-dominated forest um, with, um, with the European beach hornbeam 
Um, but I don't know which um, which species were present apart from that. Maybe Petya Nikolova can help answer this question because she um, is really an expert for this species trial. And I know she's uh, in the audience somewhere. Yes, I'm here. Hello, everybody. Uh, we had one control plot actually, and uh, on this plot we could see uh, Tilia. And uh, actually, uh, this was what was the natural reg regeneration, and uh, 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 the growth was really very poor compared to the to the aliens we had. Uh, uh, it was really a very poor growth. Uh, the surroundings, uh, as Ian told. Uh, um, they are also managed uh, from since many years, and uh, there was also Douglas fir, and uh, also uh, mm, um, some uh, abyss trees. But uh, the, this 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 forests are uh, altered by people by us. The natural forest the forest should be a beach forest. Thank okay. you, Petra. Thank you, Petra. Thank you, Jan.